Easy people, welcome back to my channel at Big Steve MCFC. And this is my uh, Manchester City versus Crystal Palace preview. And today I've got a special guest, Crystal Palace legend, uh, former England winger, John Solarco. How are you doing, John? I'm really good, thank you. I'm good. Thanks for having me on. No problem, mate. No problem. Um, listen, I can't lie. We've had a couple of tough games, Man City at the minute. We're in the middle of a title run. Um, Manchester Derby was a little bit nervous, but for me, I don't know why, but Crystal Palace on a Monday night, uh, I'm a bit scared, John. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I remember Townsend's wonder goal beating you guys 3 2 uh, last season. This season, Zaha yeah. Laporte sent off after I think about uh, seven, eight minutes, and then yeah. we went 2 0. So we're a little bit of a bogey side for you guys. And uh, I was up recently. I had a very nice invite from from Man City to come up for the Brentford game, and I sort yeah. of um, you know speak to a couple of lounges and and do a bit on the pitch to Man City TV. So that was fantastic. Really loved that. No, that's good. Um, listen, we're 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 right in the mix of it with Liverpool, and I remember Liverpool um, when we were chasing them down, losing at Palace, Suarez on the pitch, things like that. I mean, I just want to talk about Palace this season. I thought when Patrick Vieira got the job, he got a really good job. I thought that Palace had a lot of players out of contract and who left the club. And I think he almost inherited uh, a paper-thin squad. And, 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 and he just put his little bit of a twist on it. And um, he signed some good players. How, how do you think he's gone on this season? Is, is the Crystal Palace fans, are they, are they 100% behind him? Do you know what? Um, not long ago, Frank De Boer came in, an absolute world-class player, legend, Ajax legend, Holland legend. And, you know, I think Steve Parrish and the guys um, up in the boardroom wanted to take Palace to the next level. And it just didn't quite work. I think Frank tried to change the system. He really tried to play a style of football that didn't suit the players. And it just was a wrong fit. And and obviously he, he left and we were heading down and Roy Hodgson came in instead of the ship and he's been a steady head. And I think for a while they've probably been thinking we need to play better football. We need to to play more attractive football, and again go to that next level. So they were very brave in the appointment of Patrovio. I'll be honest with you. I think most Palace fans I speak to is, uh, and myself were, you know, the jury was out on Patrick. I know he done he did okay in, in America, New York. He did okay in in France, but you know you heard he played very you know, very pragmatic football from the back, try to build up. And he thought, oh, that's maybe not Palace's way and um, that's not going to suit us. But you know what? I mean, you know, Gay and Anderson at the back have been phenomenal signings. And then Tyreek Mitchell at left back. And, you know, Joe Ward keeps going and Nathaniel Klein at right back. You know, they've been fantastic as a back four and Guita playing out the back. And it, it's been a process and he's stuck to it, Patrick. And, going through midfield, but he's really got some options, at least say, you know, with Zaha going off to the African Cup of Nations, I think that gave a platform for Elise to come in and play and Eze to play. And, um, you know, they've really taken it on and they're real talents. And Zaha's come back from the African Cup of Nations and he's got something to prove now because I think Patrick's saying to him, you know, you've got to deliver now. You've got to be reliable. You've got to drop back into holes. And when you yeah. get it, you've got to make things happen. You know, you've got to link up and play. Pass, move, cross, and finish. And of course, our biggest one is is Conor Gallagher. Got him on loan for a season. He's been an absolute revelation, Steve. He's been tremendous. Mm -hmm. Everything that epitomises a fantastic young footballer. He's effervescent. He's hungry. He's energetic, and he sees nice pictures. And he just he just loves the game, and he works hard. And I think he brings out the best in everyone. Has lifted um, the team to another level. So we've got him till the end of the season. The only question mark with Palace is the forwards. So you've got Benteke, we've got AU, we've got Edouard and we've got Mateta. They're all sort of quite similar. I thought Edouard, you know, came in from Celtic, you know, yeah. who on his debut thought this lad is going to be an absolute hit. But we haven't quite been able to find someone to really take on the mantle and, and make that position their own. We lack that pace. I think really Palace's style, we need someone that's quick. Someone can do a bit of both, come to feet, run the channels, cause problems with taking teams that way. And, and really, 
you know, I think we're about five, six points short of what we where we should be. And that probably reflects in five, six goals. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, and that would take us to to maybe eight, seventh, eight in the league. So it's been a tremendous season and just what Patrick De Vera is doing, man, to, you know, sort of man management, but really the style of play and getting the players to understand the intricacies of, of quite um, sophisticated ways of playing. I mean, obviously, Man City, Pep Guardiola is the most sophisticated manager out there, the way you guys play. And and even as me as a coach, I'm looking at it and I can't, you know, I'm sort of thinking, how does he set that? How does he get him playing like that? How does he get that kind of football, that flowing, past moving, interchanging, interacting, that fast, you know, it's that one touch, don't let the ball stop, keep it moving, pass, follow. And then he paints pictures in their head and he, he's got, you know, at Man City, I think you've got such intelligent players as Liverpool have and obviously Chelsea have. And that's why... Uh, you know, you guys, those three teams are the best teams in the Premier League and probably in the world right now. But I think Patrick's trying to implement that and it takes time. And what he's done in, in the space of time, I think he's he's had is, has been nothing short of fantastic. And and really, the omens are really bright. So going into Monday night's game, it's going to be interesting to see the ideas that Patrick has of trying to stop what you do, trying to affect what you know, and trying to try and affect the game and make sure that we have an impact because the style keeps changing. Against Chelsea, yeah. we played a certain way with Elise in the hole and Zaha up front, AU on the right, um, Schlupp can play on the left or Eze can play on the left. Um, so, and then against Wolves, we went back to Mateta up front, um, AU on the right, sorry, Zaha on the right, Schlupp on the, no, sorry, AU on the right, Zaha on the left and then Schlupp and Conor Gallagher as the eights with Kiate sitting. So he has that choice of playing, I don't think it was as effective, with two holding midfield players. But he, he may decide to play that to try and stop you guys running right in midfield. So it's going to be yeah. interesting and I'm so looking forward to it. It's like a game of chess whenever you play against Pep sides. But it's also very, it's so exciting to see a Palace manager playing in such intricate, sophisticated ways, shapes and patterns, and the players getting it. And it's really great to watch. And we're very attacking and the fans are absolutely loving it. Brilliant. No, it's brilliant. Patrick's got a, a good reputation at Manchester City. Obviously, he played for us later on in his career. And then he managed the, the under-23 team, I think. Um, and there was a lot of talk of Patrick being... Um, obviously, he went out to New York, but there was a lot of talk of him staying in the City group and, and City sort of... Um, moulding him to, to maybe one day replace uh, our manager at Manchester City. He's obviously um, gone to France at Nice and then he's come to Palace now. And I just, I, on the big six show that I do, I actually tipped Palace to do really well under Vieira. Um, and like you say, he's getting a tune out of them. They're a dangerous side. The, the result at Wolves proves that. I mean, Wolves defensively are brilliant, um, especially at home, you know what I mean? Um, to go there and get a result is spot on. But there's just this thing about Palace and City at the minute. I mean, earlier in the season, it was a shock. But we obviously, we were throwing the kitchen sink at you. Caught us on the, on the counter-attack. Conor uh, Gallagher, again, we mentioned him. What a fantastic player. But I just look around the Palace team. He's got a young, hungry team. Um, like you say, that, that they're actually believing in what the manager's trying to do. Um, with Man City, the last few games, I can't lie, we took a bit to get going. Whether that's nerves, whether that's, I don't know, we know we're in the thick of the title thing, we can't afford to lose. I mean, uh, Everton away, didn't get going first half, managed to be patient, got the goal. Uh, Manchester United Sunday, first half, did okay, turned the screw second half. And I just think in these title runs, we can't afford to go to Palace and, and, and try and go gung-ho because we'll get caught on the counter. So I'm thinking, start slow, just keep possession, Everybody get a feel of the ball. Let's just be patient. And I think it's going to be a patient, patient game for City. Um, there's people bringing up the Suarez game and all that. And then and, and they're making me feel nervous, you know what I mean? But um, I just think City's got to do what Cities do, you know what I mean? Palace are a good side, but on our day, we, we can beat anyone. We've just got to not let nerves get to us and just dictate the, the play. Make Palace work hard. Make Palace think about us. Don't overthink it. 
and I think we'll get a result. But um, I spoke to a few City fans today. They're a little bit. There's. I don't know why, but everyone's a bit nervous, John. It's. Uh, we need Palace to do us a favour, mate. Can you have a word with someone? Let them know. <laughs> I think you know there've been two tremendous away performances in Watford. And um, in Wolves, Wolves was a, was a fantastic victory because they're, they're a good side to fly. In. So I think at home, we haven't quite the results that we deserved. And at times we have started slowly, but I expect, you know, seem to be really fired up. A uh, bit of time off, watch everyone play over the weekend, Monday night football, the lights. Um, I think the lads will be so fired up, you know, not looking, you know, the team's looking up now instead of looking, you know, backwards or downwards. Because, uh, you know, with that 10th now, he's sort of thinking, right, so can you push on and finish ninth, eighth, seventh? You know, how high can you go? So, and then one of, you know, it's always exciting playing against the champions. So, you know, we had Chelsea come, you know, three weeks ago, and that was an interesting game. The world champions just back of winning the world champions, you know, the European champions, world champions. So, and as I said at the time, you know, because I, I do some of the corporate when I'm speaking and as, as I'll say this time and I said that about Chelsea, we we're not competing against the Chelsea's or the Man City's or the Liverpool's. You know, it's great to play them. It's, it's exciting. And, you know, you want to compete against those teams and you want to see where you are and gauge how good you are. And of course, you want to, you know, you want to show your best. But, you know, if Man City come, you know, the champions, the reigning champions, uh, come to town and they're on form, then, you know, we'll get beat. But if they're slightly off and, you know, things go away, like, you know, the port got sent off last time. You need, you know, yeah. we're going to go our way and, you know, Guita to have an absolutely worldy of a game. You know, he's going to have to make six or seven great saves. We know that. And then up up the other end, you need at least, say, Zaha, Mateta, Schlupp, Gallagher and those boys to, to deliver and, and, and put... You know, it's City under pressure. So I expect a really, really good, exciting open game. But as you say, for you guys, that sh I, I don't know, you're chasing back to back titles. I think this will be um, Pep's fifth title in seven years. It's, it's phenomenal. So if anyone knows how to go and, you know, I, I think these runs that Pep and City go on, you know, the second half of the season are quite remarkable and quite exciting. I think the only thing. That will be in the back of City's mind. I think the priority, arguably, might just be the Champions League. I think you know a nil-nil against Sporting last night, demolished them five-nil. You know, such a fantastic game, Real Madrid, Paris Saint-Germain. Um, we're looking forward to that draw and thinking, you know, that thinking this is this is going to be exciting now. So, but you know, Pep will be looking at that. You know, still on three fronts. You know, Liverpool fighting on four. I think Liverpool. I can't call it. I think City have got the better running. I think they've got the better momentum. Um, I think they've slightly got the slightly better squad um, of players. I thought, you know, when Aguero went and didn't sign a striker and there was all that talk about Kane coming, I thought, oh, Kane comes. And Kane obviously came the other day and had the best game of his life and scored two goals. Mm -hmm. He's obviously showing Pep, you know, you should have signed me, but that was maybe uh, Levy's fault that he didn't come. But I thought, because you haven't signed a striker, but Jesus has been a revelation on the right and playing with false stars, either Sterling or Foden, um, there has, has, has been remarkable. And you've got goals everywhere, absolutely everywhere. And De Bruyne has just hit in form. So many players um, that are in form. Mahrez, Sterling, you know, Foden. Gundogan hasn't even played De Bruyne. Um, Silva's, but how good has Bernardo Silva been this year? I thought he you know, done. I thought he was... Um, he was ready, but he's showing a new lease of life. So it's it's going to be a massively tough game. And, and realistically, if, if City play anywhere near to their to their you know up in that 80, 70, 80, 90 percent, they'll they'll win. Um, but it'll be hard fought, I think. And uh, I'd take a draw right now if I was honest. <laughs> you look at the Man City team, John, and um, which players, obviously. Is a lot of great players, but which ones do you personally uh, admire and you think, you know, these are the ones that I need to watch? Is it Bernardo, Kevin De Bruyne? I mean, Mares is having a standout season. We can go through the team, but I always ask the guests who they really, really fear and, and think, you know what, they're the danger men. They're the ones we've got to watch. 
Yeah, no, it's exceptional. I mean, Luis Diaz has come in. Um, sorry, Ruben Diaz has come in and been exceptional. He's just a Rolls Royce. You know, he's you need that at the back. You've got Edison and then Diaz and in front of him, obviously. I think if anything, you know, Fernandinho just coming to him, Simon Rodri is, you know, they're fantastic in it. But De Bruyne is world class. You know, he's fantastic. But for me, I, I love Phil Foden. I think it's remarkable. You know, he's just got so much ability, so much time. You know, he's played up. He, he can play anywhere. Um, Phil, I, you know, one stage you think, can he play centre mid? He could probably play centre mid and be that creative player. Um, but I think Bernardo Silva's done so well in there. And, you know, he, he he's selected himself because David Silva for so long was your, just your, your, your linchpin. He was the creative in there. He just, you know, he was just so good. He was exceptional. And he was just about to thread things and make things happen in there. He was a little magician. Um, but, you know, Sterling, remarkably, I, I think after the end of last season and the way, you know, he seemed to be out of form and you think, he, he you know, again, he's dipping. He's, he, he's bounced back and showed his, his real quality. Uh, Mares is exceptional. I love his balance and the grace and the way he plays and he can, he scores, you know, scores goals from everywhere and he just keeps going forward. I love his, you know, his determination and his, his um, passion for it because he just seems to just love taking players on and, and scoring goals um, and seems to lose his appetite for that. Seems to have a desire and a hunger, which is what obviously Pep creates um, and, it, and it's phenomenal. So, well, wow, you know, it's just, Great plays everywhere. I've been 100 million for Jack Grealish. I thought was I, I didn't see that. I I honestly didn't really see Jack as a that you needed him. Um, and I think he's come in and he, he he's doing well. And and Jack's really got to find his feet. And he's got to decide because I think he's got the ability. But I don't. I you know it's whether he listens to Pep and takes on the information to be the player that to be. And if he does listen to him, he wants to drift into that left hand channel. And I think for the player that we want him to be for England, um, because he's without a doubt, along with Foden uh, and, and Sterling, but, you know, Foden and Grealish are incredible talents who could go on to be world stars. But they've got to listen. They've got to learn. They've got to grow. And they've got, you know, they, they've got to know um, those roles and be effective. And I think, you know, Jack at his best is unstoppable, but he's got to bring that in a, on a, in a consistent level. And at the highest level, I think he's only got two goals this year. Um, last couple of performances have been promising. Uh, but, you know, all that, you know, he's got to be more disciplined off it and more disciplined on it, more effective on it. So, I mean, if I hand on heart, I, I, you know, I'm praying that Jack Grealish becomes the player we all want him to be and blossom into this world star uh, from, a, from, a, from an England point of view, a bit more selfish than <laughs> But obviously, he wanted to deliver first for Man City, and he's not. You know, I think he's working with the best manager there is, arguably going on to probably be the best manager ever. Um, but he, you know, he goes on, wins more titles, you know, secures that, you know, Champions League. He cements himself right up there for me, right, right. Style. No, yeah, I, I, I agree a hundred percent. And thing is with Jack. I have a belief, well, I believe myself that Bernardo Silva was going to leave. So I think Pep and the board identified Jack as maybe a replacement for Bernardo in the middle. Um, it didn't happen. We, we activated the clause. We bought Jack Grealish. Jack Grealish was the, the talk of the, of the country in the Euros. Everybody loved him. Everybody wanted him to play. We signed him. Uh, and then all of a sudden, Bernardo stays. And you've got a bit of a problem because Bernardo Silva starts the season unbelievable. You've now got a hundred million pound player sat there, which Pep obviously doesn't want to look like he's he's bought him for nothing. Sometimes he pigeonholes him on the left. Um, I mean, I know we played there for Villa, but when you're playing on the left, and there's no point in Jack Grealish going on the outside and crossing the ball in the box because there's nobody in the box. So he's always encouraged to come inside. And we play, we play very, very it's very, very laboured sometimes. It can go from left to right to left to right to left to right. There's nobody seem to be making that run in the box. So City fans get a bit frustrated. But when Jack's played in the middle and he's been allowed to go left or right, you know, more central, Watford away was a good example. He had the best game he did. And then especially on Sunday in the derby, I yeah. think he was floating around really well. 
linking the play up, one touch, two touch, little little one twos with Bernardo Silva, and I think that's where Jack Grealish's future lies. And I'm no doubt there was been a bit of a culture shock for Jack coming from Aston Villa to a Pep Guardiola team. We've seen it before, Cancelo, Mares, players like that, not always hit the ground running under Pep. It took a little bit to understand his methods. We've seen great players like Thierry Henry, you know, Eric Abidal in documentaries mentioned that they didn't always get what Pep was about. And I feel with Jack Grealish, the price tag's weighing on his head. As you've mentioned before, off the field things, Manchester City is not really a club where the off the field activities of players is always in the paper. We seem to run a really good ship, but with Jack, he's got that David Beckham like fanfare. Everyone's always looking out for him. So they're good, you know, if, if he ever makes a mistake, someone's going to film it. And I just think that you know he's had a couple of little, little snippets in the paper this year. I think behind closed doors, Pep's probably pulled him in, and the City fans especially. We we we're, we're giving Jack a bit of time. We're not going to overdo it. We're not going to you know, be demanding that he, he, he sold or demanding that he's a flop. We're just going to give him a bit of time. And I think I think Jack Grealish has got a say in this league title. Somewhere down this run, I think Jack Grealish might have a little say in this league title. Just my opinion. Well, he's got, he's got the quality. He's got everything there. Um, he's had the dream move. He's come to the, the best club. He's come to the champion. Dinner fans, fabulous squad. And it's down to Jack. Jack's just got to question does he want to listen to Pep and does he if he wants to be a world-class player and really go on and win things uh, and be a true great then he's got the platform to do it and it, it, you know only he has the answers to that but I totally agree with you I think as with Foden I actually think Jack Grealish could play as an eight and could be so effective yeah. he could be really creative and, and get into nice pockets nice little holes and he sees pictures that not many people can see and he he's got such a good touch and you know such good vision and and a feel for, for passes and, and threading balls through I think again that focal point of getting the ball into Aguero you know being able to run the channels and run you haven't had but again you know Pep's adapted to that but exactly I, I it's up to Jack I mean I think you he can play as a 10 he can play as a 7 as 11 and I think he can play as an 8 so you know, he, he is that good. I think if I was Jack, you know, and in the background, I'd be working on, he, I still think if he gets that half a yard, you know, I'd be like Bale. When Bale came to Tottenham, he was a, he was a top player. He had everything, but he needed, well, Bale went and found a yard. You know, mm. he, uh, he went, he was a sports scientist. He did the weights. He did the core stability and he found a yard. And he became a world-class talent, but he, he started going a lot more direct. He started affecting the game. And, you know, that's what Jack's got to do because he's got free kicks. He can take dead balls. He can run, he can come inside. And at times, he's got to open up his legs and go on the outside and cross it with his left foot. Um, yeah. You know, give him rather than, you know, teams will just usher him inside and, and you know, shepherd him in, into, into body. Um, and you can't keep doing that. So when you look at Vinicius playing for Real Madrid last night on Mbappe, I'm not being funny. They've got that yard. They've got, yeah. they've got pace and, and he's, you know, a real key ingredient. Go back to, you know, your threes and, and your top, top, you know, strikers pull out into that wide area. I mean, Mahrez is quicker than he, he, he um, you, you think he is. Sterling's got a real yard and, and I think that's, that's something that Jack's got to add is just if he can find half a yard and just that more effectiveness, more directed, you know, direct. I want to see him having five or six shots every game and getting six or seven crosses in every game and causing trouble. Whereas I think sometimes, a bit like Wilfred Zahar at Palace, it almost seems like he gets it and then he gives it and he doesn't you know, think he can do more. I think, yeah. don't give me 75 minutes and all right, come off. But, you know, don't terrorise people. And sometimes I think they're just playing within themselves a little bit, which, you know, is a bit frustrating, but they're just such phenomenal talents. No, yeah, no, you're right. And listen, John, we're going to wrap it up. Um, two things I want from you. I want a score prediction for the game on Monday. And then after that, I want you to tell me who's going to win the league. Oh, come on, Steve. That's... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, do you know, my, my head's saying um, City, 
will win Monday. Yeah. My heart is saying 1-1. Um, a hard ball, 1-1, possibly, I, I can't see it, maybe 2-2. Two, two. You know, w- you know, we get something. Uh, again, with the title race, you know, it's incredible. I think Liverpool were 14 points or something behind at one stage. And to see them now, you know, they're, they're in all four competitions. They've got uh, the League Cup in the bag, the Carabao done, which, again, I think you guys have won for the last five years or something. So hopefully that's not some kind of omen. Klopp will be saying it is. But it's wonderful, you know, from a neutral point of view, just a, a, a title race. And it is a title race again. Um and it, it, it's going to go to, I think, City in the driving seat. I think City are very much favourites with, I'm looking at the fixtures coming up. Liverpool have got to come to your place. Obviously, a draw there or you beat Liverpool, then it's yours. So it's there to be won for City. Whereas, you know, City got to lose it rather than Liverpool got to go and win it. So Liverpool got to go on an incredibly, incredibly magnificent run to go and win this title whilst competing in the Champions League, whilst again, being in the FA Cup. So there's a lot there to play for. I think, for me, the title is, is, is City's to lose. No, I hope you're right, John. I hope you're right. I think Man City just get the job done on Monday. I think it won't be pretty. I think we're going to have nervy times, but I think it'll be similar to Everton. I think we uh, we just got to be patient, get the win, get in the coach and get the hell out of there as quick as possible. <laughs> There is, you know, he's one of those that we realise is an absolute world class superstar, Galactico. And, you know, the way he's going and the way hopefully he continues to go, you know, do a great job for us for the next three, four years. And then I'm sure that the doors at Man City or Arsenal will open up for him. So I think he'll be looking to put a good performance, but he'll learn something from Pep. But, you know, it's the uh, it's the master's master versus the pupil very much on, on Monday night. Well, John, thanks for coming on my channel. Um, I really appreciate your time and you spoke really well. I'm sure the Palace fans will tune in and uh, may the best team win on Monday. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. Cheers, mate. Thank you very much. Thanks, Steve.